Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and this is part two of getting started with the WOW engine in PaperVision 3D and Flex 3. Now, the uh, demonstration that we're using can be found at nkuflc.org forward slash WOW physics. Let's take a look at that. And here's our orbiting or bouncing planets. And you click on that, and it randomizes the force vector, and the planets bounce around again. And you can turn gravity on. And you can see the planets are pulled down. Adjust gravity in different dimensions. You can zoom in to see the planets. Or you can zoom out, way out. Oh, well, there they are. And you can change the rotation. And you can see it definitely are indeed in a real 3D environment. And that's nice to see. Let's zoom back in. And so now let me show you how this non-trivial example was created. So you can also grab that code from code.google.com forward slash p forward slash flex3 cookbook1 forward slash download slash forward slash list and that's under the wow engine dot zip so go ahead and do that unzip it and follow along with this tutorial and the key of course is to create a paper vision object and a wow object and to match those two up now in preparation for this uh, tutorial and actually creating the planet's orbital uh, calculations I went to the web and just grabbed every single piece of code I could find on the wow engine you can see it's here and there wasn't much of it and I actually saw a number of uh, requests for people to publish code so people can learn how to use the uh, well wow engine and so I'm actually creating this and throwing it out to the community so people can get a head start on using well since it is so simple to use so I'm in the uh, flex 3 engine and uh, I've titled this uh, flex 3 wow bouncing planets and you can see my classes the FR class is the well engine the DE class is a supporting uh, file and then you have all your typical uh, paper vision the org file and we have some images and we have uh, the Karina file the images we're looking at here are called planet textures. If you open up the textures, here's the textures for the different planets. I have quite a few because I've been building my orbital uh, calculation simulation, and this is just some release code to get you started in um, the WOW engine. Double click on that Flex3 uh, WOW bouncing planets MXML file, and here's the folder. And the first thing I do in the uh, code is, of course, the application complete, and I actually execute the planet service.send method which actually uh, executes the HTTP service command which brings in the XML of the planet. So if I go to the XML file, planet XML, open that up and double click on that, you can see I have all the different planets starting with the Sun. Of course the Sun is a star, but the other ones are planets and you can see here's Mercury and here's the diameter and the mass and the radius and the period and the tilt and all the other information that are needed. And there's the Venus and there's Earth, and you see in addition at the very bottom I'm actually bringing in the textures, and that's all we're going to use for this code is we're actually just going to bring in the textures of the planet so we can wrap those around a sphere. So let's go back to the code. So once that executes uh, the HTTP service command and brings in the XML, then the result handler is uh, executed. Before we look at the result handler, let's go ahead and just take a look at the typical import statements. Here's our typical 3D imports for pay for vision. Then I have a new set of WOW engine imports. Then I have my tweener imports. I have my flash imports. I have my 3D members uh, private constants declared. I have my camera constant declared. I have my WOW engine uh, declared, which is new for WOW. And then I have an array of objects that I'm going to be bringing in, basically a paper vision object and a WOW engine object. So you bring in those two different object arrays, and you match them up together. And then I have a gravity boolean. They'll turn gravity on and off, as you saw earlier. The plane, which I don't use in this particular instance, and the angle, which is zero. So uh, from that point on, I need a bindable data element, which is the planet data array collection, which allows me to bring in the, uh, the textures of the planets. And I have a drop shadow that I place on the planets. And below that is that result handler. So let's start once again. You start the application. The application tag runs the planet service. The planet service, which is in the HTTP service, runs the HTTP service, which forces the result handler. So let's control click on that, brings us down to the result handler function. And in my result handler function, I do two things. I grab the uh, XML data and place it in a planet data array collection. That allows me to bring in all the XML data using the e, new E4X. And then I run an initialization function. Let's go ahead and click on that and go to the initiation function. And I have two things that have to be initiated. I have the initiation 3D and the initiation physics. So typically in the other paper vision tutorials that we've done, I'm just working with the initiation 3D. I'm initiating the um, paper vision objects. 
But now I have to initiate one, the paper vision object, and also initiate the wow physics objects. Really cool. It's all done the same way. I do this all done in parallel. Uh, the other thing I do here is I just basically make the gravity sliders and labels invisible. So when you click on them, they become visible and you can slide. And if you don't need them or if you're not using gravity, they disappear later on. So the first thing I do is initiate that 3D. Let's go there. And here is just all the typical paper vision stuff. So we've done this in previous tutorials. No reason to belabor this point. But this is my viewport. Here's the canvas that I throw all my uh, objects on. My render engine is just a basic uh, render engine. My scene, my camera, and my camera dot zoom. I am using the camera 3D that allows me to pan around the orbits. That's how I get that spinning effect of the orbits. So you can see here my orbits are spinning, but actually they're not spinning at all. I'm just spinning the camera around the orbits, around the object, so I can spin back and forth. But that does definitely allow me to see that this is indeed a 3D scenario. It makes me happy. Uh, then I have my uh, zoom, camera zoom, and then I have my drop shadow for my filter. And then, that, of course, that filters uh, the viewport. And then I create my 3D objects. And basically what I'm doing here in the Create 3D Objects is, let me open this up a little. I'm actually basically throwing the objects onto the stage. And um, I, typically what I've done before with the, if you go back and review the um, 3D carousel, I basically replace the planes with, the, with spears. And I'm throwing these spheres on the stage, but I'm also grabbing the textures from the XML data. So I just grab those, I grab those out of the Planet Textures folder, and I reference my Planet Data dot my textures, which is part of the XML folder, just like stuff we've done in the past. Nothing special here. Throwing all those objects onto the stage. So in my initiation function, after I've initiated my 3D objects, I want to initiate my physics objects, so I'll click on that. And here's my WOW physics engine. I start that up, and that number in the middle basically is the time constant. So the larger that is, the faster simulation will run, but the more less accurate it will be because that's the time iteration. So if you want a very accurate simulation, you make that smaller, but things run slower and need more uh, RAM to do so. Below that is the bounding box, which allows the objects to be contained in the container. You see they're bouncing around in the container, and they're not moving out of that bounding box. And so that's the physics of the well engine right there. And then you're going to create those physical objects that will be bound in that box. And once again, just as you set out the, the uh, paper vision objects, you do the same thing by iterating through the sphere creation of the physics objects. And once that's done, you can randomize the force vector. And that's what I do here. This is a small randomizing force vector that randomizes in the X, Y, and Z direction and has the objects bouncing around each time you click the screen. And you can see right there that has the Add Listener Mouse button, which basically adds a mouse click to the screen. So whenever you click that, the force is randomized. And so that's actually a nice effect, pretty cool looking. Uh, not very useful as far as this planet simulation is concerned, but is fun to look at. Now let's move on from there. In the paper vision create 3D object at the very bottom after the objects are created, you have your typical interframe where basically you're running your frame or your loops that allow you to update the, uh, the scene on the stage every 24 frames a second. Let's go with that. That's the update function. And so now that you have your physical objects created and you have your uh, paper vision objects created, you're actually updating both the physical objects and the paper vision objects so they connect to each other. Let's take a look at that real quick. I click on that update function. You can see basically I just do the wow step. And uh, when you do the 3D function, basically I'm just rendering the camera and the render scene, just like I've done before. So basically you can see that the uh, paper vision and the well objects are running together. The last thing that has to happen is they have to be updated uh, together. And you can see here's your apply 3D to physical object. And in this case, actually what you're doing is you're taking the well object position and you're taking the physical object position and you're matching them up. So wherever the well objects are in the physical space, so the uh, paper vision 3D objects are forced to be there as well. A very simple just remember, if you get confused, the two objects are running in parallel. And once you get that idea, it's simple to understand this code. So I'm basically releasing this source code to the community so you can get started with WoW. Uh, I think it's a great engine, and I'll be improving upon it in the future. So thanks a lot for watching this tutorial. If you have any questions, go ahead and email me. I think it's a lot of fun. Get into it, and it definitely is the future and where things are going on the web.